We're here in Gladstone working on a project that's looking at the marine ecosystem in the harbour around Port Curtis and trying to understand more about how it works so that we can try and bring about a, a better kind of balance between uh, economic progress and the environment. The turtles here in the harbour have been under pressure due to a range of factors, both natural and, and man-made. They're an iconic species that um, everyone wants to try to look after and they're sort of an indicator of the health of the ecosystem because they're dependent on seagrass which is right at the base of the food chain. So if we see something happening to the turtles, uh, we know that we've got to start thinking about what's going on in the rest of the environment. One of the other activities in Gladstone that potentially impacts on turtles is dredging. So dredging stirs up a lot of sediment and that can block out the light from seagrass and smother it. And as seagrass is one of the main food sources for turtles, we need to know what the effects of dredging on seagrass are, which parts of the harbour have been most affected, and again, how that interacts with the turtles' use of the harbour. We're tagging these turtles with two types of technology. We're tagging a small number of turtles with satellite tags. They're going to tell us how well the other types of tags that we're using are working. So these are smaller acoustic tags that can last for up to 10 years. By studying the movements of these turtles and interpreting the data we get, we'll be able to identify uh, feeding areas and also uh, transit paths that turtles use to get from one part of the harbour to the next. 368, 24. For example, in the Moreton Bay Marine Park, we've got go slow areas that are designated uh, for boats to travel at a slow speed so that they don't run into turtles and dugongs. Uh, similar things might happen in Gladstone Harbour, you know, if appropriate ways can be found to, to manage vessel movements and animal movements. We'll be using the Starbug autonomous vehicle, um, a mini submarine that's going to give us a picture of not only what's present in terms of seagrass, but also how much sediment is in the water, what the salinity and temperature is, dissolved oxygen, a whole range of features that can help us interpret what's going on in the environment. So we're taking samples of many different kinds to look at the reproductive status of the turtles, um, their health in terms of uh, what's the composition of their blood. And from samples that we take, we can also tell something about the diet of the turtle uh, over not just the past few days, but also over the months previous. So it gives us a, a multi-layered picture of the health of the turtles, how they use the environment. And then we can link that to our tracking studies that tell us where the turtles are going and which parts of the harbour they're moving into. But there's still a lot of unknowns in terms of how long turtles stay in the harbour, what they're doing while they're here, and how their movements might interact with the human activities in the harbour. Industry and environment are both here to stay. If we're going to have both of them coexisting in a hundred years time, we have to start putting in the work now. The more we know about the parts of the harbour that the turtles use, the better we'll understand how future development in the harbour can be managed to minimise any harmful effects on turtles.